a small universal deterministic authenticated encryption for the IoT. It's a paper by Superdeep Anik, Andrei Bogdanov, Atul Leux, and Elmar Tischhauser. And Superdeep will give the talk. Thank you for the introduction. Okay, uh, so I'll be talking about this uh, deterministic uh, block cipher based uh, authenticated encryption mode called Sunday. Um, now, block ciphers have traditionally been uh, very, very popular primitives for implementing or constructing uh, authenticated encryption modes. Uh, often it may so happen that uh, block cipher, when considered in isolation, is ideal for a given environment, but uh, when it is used in a mode of operation, uh, quite often it may so happen that uh, the mode of operation kind of erases uh, the benefits that uh, the block cipher brings uh, in isolation. Um, uh, this is the case with, uh, for example, um, SIV that requires uh, two independent keys, as in the case of uh, COPA or ELMD, that requires internal state size of at least thrice uh, the block size of the underlying block cipher, or in the case of uh, EAX, which requires multiple calls to the block cipher before any data can be processed. Mm, another example is uh, this um, GCM SIV that was proposed in uh, CCS in 2015. Although it achieves um, quite competitive performance in software on uh, recent uh, Intel-based architectures, uh, the mode employs uh, mul full multiplication in this uh, 128-bit uh, finite field, which makes it an unattractive proposition for implementation in hardware and uh, uh, resource-constrained platforms. Okay, so we, we propose a mode of operation called Sunday that is efficient uh, with respect to short messages uh, and is competitive with uh, modes like Clock and Jumbo in this respect. It has a short state size. It is flexible in so much as it offers uh, good performance characteristics over both uh, uh, resource-constrained and high-end platforms. And uh, additionally, it also provides uh, robustness if uh, the device in which it is implemented uh, does not have access to reliable, sufficient and reliable sources of randomness. So our mode of uh, encryption is completely deterministic. Um, uh, the specifications currently do not explicitly mention a nonce, but uh, if a nonce is required, uh, the first uh, X bits or so of the associated data can be used for this purpose. So it is a SIV mode optimized for lightweight settings. It uses uh, a single key and a bunch of block cipher calls. Uh, the only additional operations that the mode uh, uses are all linear. First is an XOR, and second is uh, multiplication by a constant over a finite field, uh, both of which can be achieved by only XOR gates. So it also has a, a short state size. If uh, the underlying block cipher has, uh, uh, has block size n, then uh, Sunday also requires a size of n, which is an improvement over uh, some of the recent uh, modes of operations proposed in literature. Uh, so our performance is uh, limited by fundamentally the fact that it's a rate half mode, uh, so that it requires two block cipher calls per message block. As such, the ideal use case uh, for our mode of operations is for uh, short messages, uh, for which it achieves competitive performance with respect to other modes of operation. For example, uh, consider a data set consisting of one block of nonce AD and uh, plain text. In such an event, uh, Sunday would require five calls to the underlying block cipher, which would reduce to four if uh, you allow one block cipher call to be pre-computed. Uh, so as such, the, uh, the ideal use case is uh, uh, settings in which uh, there is more uh, cost to uh, the communication rather than computational resources, and uh, settings such as the, uh, like uh, no repetition of uh, social data or plain text, et cetera. Uh, so this is uh, an algorithmic description of uh, the encryption and decryption. I think it would be much better if I moved to a pictorial representation. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> so 
So the initial input uh, to the mode of operation is this value called IV, which can take uh, four values depending on whether the associated data or plain text is empty or not. Uh, after every block cipher call, the associated data and the message is absorbed by means of an XOR function. The domain separation is provided by these two multiplication operations over the finite field. Uh, uh, the multiplication is uh, with the constant two or four, depending on whether the final block is complete or not. Uh, as can be seen, uh, that uh, after absorbing the associated data and the plain text, uh, Sunday uh, executes one additional block cipher call and, and uh, produces the tag uh, uh, for this uh, associated data and message pair which also serves as a kind of a synthetic IV to this, um, sorry, this arrow should point here. Uh, it also serves as the input synthetic IV to this uh, OFB mode of encryption, OFB type stream cipher mode of encryption which, provide, uh, which produces key stream that is XOR to the message to provide the ciphertext, to produce the ciphertext. <coughs> uh, I come to the main security statement of uh, Sunday. So we have shown in the paper that, uh, and in fact we have proven in the paper that uh, the DAE advantage of uh, Sunday uh, reduces to this huge expression over here, where uh, NE is the total different, um, uh, total distinct blocks, uh, block cipher calls, and, uh, and the mode makes at least Q encryption and QV decryption queries, and total length cost of sigma A, sigma P, and sigma C. Uh, this is also, the security is shown up to uh, birthday bound. Uh, the entire proof is uh, around 10 to 12 pages long, but what I will do in this, uh, in this presentation is uh, give you a broad overview of how we came um, to get this expression. Okay. Um, so the st step one is quite natural. Uh, after replacing the block cipher calls with uh, a uniform random function rho, so it's, it, it can be shown that uh, the DAE advantage of uh, Sunday can, uh, it can be shown by uh, can be shown that the DAE advantage of Sunday by using uh, some sort of a triangular inequality, it can be shown that this advantage can be written as a sum of three terms. Uh, so this term is uh, comes from the PR. PRF switch, and this is the PRP advantage of the underlying block cipher. And this is uh, the DAE advantage of Sunday when uh, operating on uniform random functions. Okay, uh, although um, we compute uh, the DAE advantage of uh, Sunday directly, we can uh, also separately argue for the authenticity and confidentiality of the mode. Uh, for confidentiality, you can, uh, can observe that uh, the ciphertext is uh, essentially produced by uh, a stream cipher like OAV mode of operation, and, and hence uh, confidentiality is intuitively guaranteed if uh, the input to the OAV mode, uh, that is, uh, the stack over here, is unpredictable to the adversary. Uh, it's slightly tricky to do so because uh, the associated data and plain text are, are processed similarly, and uh, the only mode of domain so separation are these uh, very, very simple functions that we employ. Uh, so a bulk of the security argument uh, goes, behind, goes to prove the fact that uh, this uh, domain separation, however simple, actually works for our purpose. For authenticity, uh, uh, it is important to observe that if an adversary for forges uh, a message uh, ciphertext tag pair CT, then what it essentially means is that uh, the MAC of uh, the decryption algorithm when run on C comma T uh, outputs the tag T. Uh, so by definition, uh, C is assumed not to be part of any previous transcript or assumed not to have been output by any previous encryption call. And in under such circumstances, it is easy to show that uh, forging is equivalent to finding the pre-image or the second pre-image of this underlying map. And a part of the security argument also goes to prove that goes, on, goes behind proving that um, 
it is difficult for the adversary to do so. Uh, now, uh, for ease of representation, uh, what I'll do is label uh, some parts of the operation so that uh, it is easier to express. For example, this uh, set of operations from here to here, uh, which produces uh, this key stream, uh, given the social data and message input, we'll call ink stream. And this stretch of operation, this uh, set of sub-operations, which uh, when given T produces the key stream, we'll call the simply stream. And, and the encryption uh, algorithm of Sunday, which produces uh, the tag and the ciphertext, uh, is, uh, can be shown to be equivalent to applying the ink stream algorithm, producing the, uh, producing the key stream, and then applying this chop XOR algorithm, which is essentially taking the key stream, chopping it first to make it of the same size as plain text, and then XORing, hence the name chop XOR. So uh, the encryption part of Sunday is essentially the composition of these two operations, chop, XOR, and extreme. And we can similarly describe a deck stream algorithm, which proceeds in this roundabout manner. So given an input uh, TC, it first uh, computes stream, produces key stream, then, uh, then applies chop XOR with the ciphertext to get the get some message uh, some message m prime and then it comes back over here then it again runs the ink stream algorithm for a comma m prime and then it looks at the output t prime that it has produced if t equal to t prime then the tag has uh, then the tag has verified in, the, in such in such an event it, re it releases the output stream t as uh, it releases uh, nothing and so the decryption algorithm is also kind of deck stream ex, uh, composed with this chop XOR uh, uh, algorithm. So, so given this uh, uh, description of Sunday, so we have an encryption algorithm with this chop XOR times X stream and the decryption algorithm, which is chop XOR times deck stream. So the next step is to remove this uh, chop XOR from this. Uh, Ink and deck to make uh, things easier. So, uh, so what we can do is define another adversary a chop XOR that uh, interacts with uh, either uh, the encryption on encryption decryption with the, the uniform random function or dollar bottom, and it, uh, for every query that a makes. Uh, a chop, chop XOR simply uh, forwards it to its oracle and uh, then chops and XORs with the, key, uh, with the message or the ciphertext and returns it uh, to A. Uh, after doing this, it can be shown that the, uh, the AE advantage of A chop XOR is, is uh, more than uh, the, the advantage of um, the DAE advantage of the actual Sunday mode of encryption on uh, running on uh, uniform random functions. And so we kind of uh, concentrate on this term, on proving the bounds on this term. Uh, the next step is kind of natural too. So we define two additional routines called the stream star and the deck of stream star. Uh, Stream star simply ignores the OFB mode and outputs completely random values of the required length. And uh, deck stream star does the required bookkeeping. If uh, uh, the input T equals uh, to some TIE previously present in the transcript, it outputs stream star of TI. Otherwise, it simply outputs bottom. And by applying triangular inequality, it can be shown that uh, this DAE advantage can be written as a sum of this and this. So concentrate on the term at the bottom. So the term at the bottom is uh, the, the advantage of this adversary when interacting with the extreme star and bottom. So, uh, so this is essentially... So bounding this term is essentially bounding the probability that the extreme star produces non-bottom output. 
And it has been shown in the paper that uh, this is same as finding a pre-image or the second pre-image of the underlying first 10 bits of dollar, which is uh, basically the Mac algorithm. And so it can be argued that this term is actually bounded by uh, this expression over here, where Q is the total encryption and Q is the total number of decryption queries. So we are only left with this term uh, in the expression, which we haven't found a uh, bound for yet. And the next part of the paper is dedicated to finding the bound on this, um, uh, this advantage. And we have used uh, the edge coefficient technique to uh, bound this uh, advantage term. For those who are familiar with the edge coefficient technique, it involves uh, taking the set of all transcripts and uh, partitioning the set of transcripts into T good and T bad so that certain properties uh, are, uh, are satisfied. So in order to do so, we will uh, start with a few definitions. Uh, in order to be, in order to explain the partition of the transcripts better, so uh, the first um, step is uh, to uh, to convert the transcript from a set of values to a graph, and we do it as follows. So we we split uh, the associated data and the message into into individual blocks, and after splitting it, we prepend a single bit with every block in order to indicate whether it is the final block or not. For example, since this is, this is the final block, we prepend um, the bit one, otherwise we prepend zero. And then we transform this uh, set of values into a set of functions defined as follows. So for every uh, block, uh, for, for every extended block delta comma x, where delta is a bit and x is from uh, an element of, uh, of uh, block size. So we define f of delta x as simply an XOR if uh, it is a non-final block. And uh, we multiply with a constant and XOR if uh, it is a final block and it is uh, complete slash incomplete. And so uh, you, can be, you can see that every transcript can be uh, written as a sequence of functions. For example, if associated data and the message are both non-empty, then uh, so we can write, uh, we can convert this transcript into a sequence of functions given by i of a comma m, which starts with the initial iv and uh, lists the set of functions one by one. And any constant values in the sequence should be simply interpreted as a constant function. So given this uh, set of functions x1 to xl, we can then define the sequence rho hat of x, which alternately applies the uniform random function rho and elements of this sequence. And it is not very difficult to see that uh, the Sunday algorithm is, the encryption of the Sunday algorithm is essentially is essentially the stream hat algorithm applied on row hat of i of a of m. And now it, I mean, uh, the converting the tra a transcript to a graph is very natural if you follow simple rules of prefix, like for uh, uh, input messages or input functions that uh, have a common prefix, we just make sure that if they have the same prefix, then, then they follow the same path from the root to the leaf. So we can define two such graphs. One is simply uh, one in which the nodes are simply the values. Uh, we can define a similar graph in which the values are converted into function sequences. Under most conditions, uh, the graphs are isomorphic, though not always. And I'll come to the situation why. Well, uh, come to the situation when they're not isomorphic. Um, so, uh, and of course, uh, the, the output key stream produced by the algorithm is expressed by these yellow nodes, and they exist as independent, unconnected nodes in the graph. <coughs> so when we are implementing this as a function, it is easy to see that uh, these edges represent calls to the uniform random function, and each uh, 
each query to Sandhya or each row of the transcript is essentially application of all the functions starting from the root node to the leaf node. And this being so, we can also label each of the nodes by these labels, chi, chi 0, chi 1. So a label would be defined as the intermediate value applied after applying the function f uh, that is written inside the node. For example, chi 0 would be uh, uh, applying the uniform random function iv, then applying the function fa0 and the output that you get. We can use that as a label to that node. Okay, uh, so now we will define, trans uh, we'll define the partition of the transcripts. So, so we define the set of bad transcripts to be the transcripts that force the events one or two to occur. Th these are the events that allow the adversary to construct trivial forgeries. So the first ba bad event is if uh, one of the keystream blocks has value equal to one of the four IV values that uh, the mode starts with. And the second bad event is a collision in between the keystream blocks themselves. <clears throat> so, so this having, uh, since uh, this having been defined, we now concentrate on the set of transcripts in which uh, these two events do not occur. So there are two more events of interest, the first of which we will call a structural collision. So this happens if, uh, if two uh, values, when two blocks, when they are converted into functions, they, they are, uh, when two unequal values, when they are converted into functions, they map to the same function. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, so, so the main, how much time do I have? Okay. So, <laughs> So uh, the main um, uh, part is that uh, a a such a structural collision will never occur in Sunday because the mapping from delta x to f of delta x is essentially injective. So this, uh, this is the thing that we do not have to worry about in, uh, in, in this mode of encryption. And the final uh, label of interest is uh, a row collision in which the labels of two nodes uh, collide, which may occur due to randomness uh, induced because of applying the uniform random functions represented by the edges. So you see in the paper we use graph theoretic arguments to prove or, or, or rather to bound the probability that uh, collision occurs between the labels. And once we do that, uh, the application of the edge coefficient technique is straightforward. So we can uh, prove that uh, the only term that was left behind, we can prove that this uh, advantage bounds, uh, is bounded by this expression over here. And now, since we have all the necessary terms, we can add all of them to get the bound in term one. So very quickly, uh, we uh, do a brief overview of performance. So we uh, implemented uh, the mode in um, both uh, a resource, uh, both a low-end uh, on V8 platform and also on uh, uh, the Intel, uh, on, on Intel CPU for message lengths from, I think, four to 128 blocks. We found that on high-end architectures, it's only 3% slower than uh, two passes of CBC, and on, 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 on the low-end architecture, the difference was around 7%. Uh, for all processes in general, for short messages, it was only 11% worse than for longer messages. However, the performance penalty is uh, far greater for modes like uh, COFB, which were designed to be single pass. And for this, we have a significant penalty in both uh, low-end and high-end platforms. So this is a, a tabulation of uh, the software performance. Uh, at, uh, one minute maximum. Okay. So this is uh, on both uh, the high-end and low-end platforms. Uh, for ASIC, uh, we kind of tweaked the doubling by replacing it with eight doublings on a, on a smaller field which we found very nicely fits into this bytewise AES architecture and does not cause any problems to the security because this mapping from delta x to f of delta x is still injective. Uh, we implemented it on uh, 
using this uh, bytes by serial AES architecture and also Nibblewise present arch architecture and bunch of both architectures, it compares very favorably with uh, the existing uh, modes that also make use of this uh, byte by serial AES architecture. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so if there are any questions, I would encourage you to uh, ask them afterwards. But if there is a very important question, you can still ask it. We can make an exception. OK, no one wants to ask a question. Um, so let's uh, thank Supadeep again.